Well, you know what I heard? <laughs> I think God and Moses both just have enormous respect for each other. Come live with me. Look, the judges are wrong. Even the Egyptian judge is impressed. Until recently, you claimed that the Earth revolved around the sun. Welcome to History Bites. I'm Rick Green. In the 60s, there was a musical revolution, and America rocked to the British invasion. In the 1780s, there was a revolution, and America was rocked by a different British invasion. It was the American War of Independence. Like Vietnam in the 60s, this was a war no one wanted. But unlike Vietnam, Americans started out divided and ended up united, literally. American colonists didn't like British rule. They didn't want to serve in British armies or pay British taxes, and they wanted to keep the freedoms they had. So let's go back to 1780, where the counterculture is shaking up the establishment. And the best place to see where American culture was born is where most of it has died, on television. And now, from beautiful downtown Boston and its tea-scented harbor, <laughs> NBC is depressed to present Blowin' and Farton's Laughing, starring Dan Blowin' and Dick Farton, with special guest star Benjamin Franklin and R.D. Middleton, Patrick Henry, Goldie Powderhorn, Ethan Allen, plus America's most violent peacenik, Joanne Warlife, and Lily Tomahawk, and me, King George III. Oh, I'm sorry. That should be Garfield Owens the first. And now, laughing. Have you read this new Declaration of Independence? It's really quite stirring. Stirring, is it? Well, let me just see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of hope. <laughs> pursuit of happiness. Obviously, you never met hope. I guess not. <laughs> She'll bring you happiness. I can tell you that much. Oh, I should have seen that one coming. I'm surprised you didn't. I'm ashamed I'm of you. I don't know myself. you. So this hope girl's quite a, quite a girl, is she? Oh, you bet your sweet biffy she is, <laughs> yes. Have you ever heard of a hope chest? Oh, yes, indeed. She's the one who made it famous. Is that right? I'm King George by George, and I'll run the colonies into the ground. Police! Are you in favor of helping the rebels? Why, sure. In fact, I gave a few of those minute men a lift here to the studio. Goldie, <laughs> they're not minute men. They're minute men. They can be ready at a minute's notice. Oh, really? Okay, guys, get out of there. <laughs> the 13 Colonies, a poem by Patrick Henry. <laughs> Maryland, Virginia, and Rhode Island, of course. Delaware, Carolina, South and North. Massachusetts and Connecticut. Pennsylvania and Georgia. But there's Jersey, York, and Hampshire, too. And each of them starts with a new. Stop it, Timmy, stop it, Timmy, stop it, Timmy, stop it, Timmy. Stop it, Timmy. <laughs> It's government for the people, of the people, by my people! One ringy dingy. Two ringy dingy. Hello, is this the party to whom I am speaking? <laughs> yes, I wish to speak to a Mr. King, first name George. Is this George King? <laughs> King George. Yes. The third. Yes, let's go Well, sir, I'm sorry, that's not my problem. <laughs> You're on the throne? Yes. <laughs> well, sir, I can call back later when you're done. <laughs> oh, well, sir, I'm calling to inform you that you cannot tell us what to do here in America. No, you are over there and we are over here. So if you try to tax us, that's one long distance charge we will not accept. <laughs> oh. Sir, this is not that kind of a call. <laughs> Sir, are you familiar with the expression no taxation without representation? <laughs> no. No. I thought not. No. You what? <laughs> You're not even familiar with the term representation? <laughs> well, Mr. King, sir, I suggest that you take your stamp tax and you reverse the charges, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. <laughs> While the British and Americans were 3,000 miles apart on a number of issues, the states were hardly united. Americans were as divided over independence as they were later over Vietnam. I wish you could have been there, Gloria, so you could have heard Mr. Jefferson's speech. He's a great man. He's, he's making a new country. 
Hey, 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 meathead, we already got a new country there. It's called New York. In fact, we got plenty of new countries here. But New Jersey, New Hampshire, how much newer do you want it to be? New New York? Colony so nice, they named it twice. Joyful Jing Bud. Daddy, Mr. Jefferson is trying to improve the colony is all. Make some changes. That's why Michael's joined the Sons of Liberty. Oh, you, you joined what? But them pinkos ain't no Sons of Liberty. Them Sons of Bitch. Oh, 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 you see that them Sons of Liberty, they go around storing up trouble here. Yeah? Oh, yeah, they beat people up, smash private property here. Yeah? Yeah, only the property of people who oppose freedom. Oh, yeah, well, I got news for you, Meathead. I happen to like the country just the way it is, Meathead. Part of the good old C of E, British Empire. <laughs> Red, white, and blue, the Onion Jack. But, Daddy, we could be in a new country with colonies like Virginia and the Carolinas. Oh, jeez, what do I got in common with a bunch of plantation-owning tobacco smoke? Pulling hot air? I don't know. Part of the British Empire. Oh, you see that there? You got your nice English laws, right. English freedoms, English tea from England, Scottish jam from Scotland, whale oil lamps from Wales. Yeah, hey, not to mention them good old British troops, too, eh? The best in the world. Protect us from the French and the Indians from evading us from Canada there. What's North Carolina got to talk about? Lots of things. Such as? Well, rice and indigo. <laughs> hey, you hear that, Edith? Breakfast is now dark blue rice. <laughs> Are you facing tough economic decisions? Has the global economy left you behind? Well, now you can get in on the wealth of nations. I'm Adam Smith. And I believe getting rich is more than your right. It's your duty! With my Wealth and Nation system, I'll show you why greed is good. Not just for you, but for everyone. And, and I, I like my brother, so, so I don't understand why he's been shooting at me. Now, John, I'm going to introduce a psychological term here called allegiance. Now, what side are you on in the war? Well, I, I, I want America to be independent. So you're a rebel. I don't know if I'd call myself a rebel. Let's have the emotional intelligence to accept these terms. Okay, I'm, I'm a rebel. But your brother Wally is a loyalist or royalist, the same thing. When he's shooting at you, to him, he's shooting at an American rebel. Because although you are family, you have a different allegiance. Now, I think you can understand that, can you? Yeah, I, I, I guess I can. And, and I'm, I'm guessing you also take a few pot shots right back at him, too? Huh? Am I right, John? Yeah, I, I do, but, but he deserves it. Maybe, but first, I want you to know you're not alone. Now, I want you to meet a woman who has tarred and feathered her daughter. <laughs> Order them a complete money-making guide and learn how financial freedom leads to personal freedom and human liberty. My simple system will give you the know-how and the desire to get rich. I want 60 Minute Men or one 60 Minute Man. <laughs> can she say that on television? Yes, she can, thanks to freedom of preach. I mean, preach of freedom. <laughs> If I ever write a constitution, they should check that out. I mean, freedom from speech. If Pocahontas married Paul Bunyan, she'd be Poke a Bunyan. Who writes this stuff? Don't look at me. These jokes are a declaration of incompetence. Okay, I'm with you. Okay. You know, I cannot believe that you are supporting the revolution of the colonies against Mother England. Well, I demand my rights. Well, you already have rights. You got freedom of speech. Absolutely. You can debate and fight. You pay almost no taxes. That's Land him? theirs for the taking. No sheriffs. No. No, our colonial churches don't take tithes. There's no cap on wages, unlike in Europe. And 
no guilds or unions to mm-hmm. prevent you from pursuing the career of your choice. True. There's no press game. Nope. There's no military services voluntary. There's no None. real class system. None. Nope. Life's pretty good. Life is very good. Life is pretty good. All right, so what is it that you minute men want? We want minute maids. Freshly squeezed, please. In the 1700s, the British Army had fought an expensive war to kick the French out of Canada. The British felt that Americans had benefited from this victory and they should be prepared to bear some of the cost. This led to various new taxes like the stamp tax and the tax on tea, which in turn led to the revolution. So in a way, Canada led to America. U.S. of A, eh? Party, what party? The Boston Tea Party. Oh, I'll drink tea to that. Mr. Franklin. The British call you an American printer who indulges in womanizing, gluttony, and every form of vice. Aren't you offended? I sure am. I gave up being a printer years ago. The way I see it, America should get Canada. After all, we paid for it. So, what did you British troops think of our sharpshooters in the Continental Army? Well, I have to admit it, some of my men were so scared they messed their pants. So, I guess that would make them an incontinental <laughs> Mr. Franklin, should women be given the right to <laughs> um, bear arms? Goldie, if you come back to my place, I'll give you the right to bear anything you like. Flow in my ear, I'll follow you anywhere. Speaking of charges, when are you going to pay the stamp tax? Come on, just give me the money and I'll give you the stamp. I have paid! I mailed you a check! I didn't get it. That's probably because I didn't have a stamp. <laughs> That very moment, as the Liberty Bell struck one. Hi, sports fans. Big Al here. Oh, I love that tingle. Well, this week, sports fans in Delaware are all excited about bear baiting, and so was I, until I found out it's bear as in grizzly, not as in naked. Anyway, I've gone fishing, and I've tried worm baiting and frog baiting, but friends... If you're bear baiting, you must be going to catch one mighty big fish. Look out, all you whales! <laughs> and I don't mean Betsy Ross! It's all right here in the Wealth of Nations. And I'll also send you my theory of moral sentiments absolutely free! Because by making me rich, you'll also be helping yourself and society as a whole. Uh, I'll pick Thomas Jefferson to block. Okay. Thomas Jefferson, how's that writing of yours coming along? Oh, uh, uh, pretty good, I guess. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, just finished the Virginia Statute on Religious Liberty and, uh, oh yeah, the, uh, Declaration of Independence. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you so kind. Uh, and, oh, and I've just become the father to a new son, uh, by my slave, Sally. Well, that's great. Good luck with the writing on freedom and the little slave child. Now, here's the question. Seven years back in 1773, a group of American protesters dressed up as Mohawk Indians and dumped tea into the Boston Harbor. What were they protesting against? Uh, the mistreatment of Indians? <laughs> uh, they wanted the vote for women. Now I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Um... I'm going to say they were protesting to get rid of the monarchy. Um, I'm going to disagree. Well, you're right to disagree. The correct answer is they were protesting against the tax on tea and the East India Company's monopoly of it. 
<laughs> you look, you get to look around, and there's a colony, you know, you see, and you can appreciate, and you just say, well, well what the roads, and the, you know, and there's, and then there's the shops, and the kings, and the king, and the big guy, the crown, British government, and point arbitrary, and I don't know, so they interfere, and they change, get, get, they change the rules, so naturally, people get, you know, upset, and they feel, you know, colonists, they're mad, and then Maryland, and Delta, and South Carolina, and then they just resent, you know, and there's a tea, and then it gets, because you got the rum, and practically all, and every, you know, nothing personal against, against the people, but you know, it's from England, but they can only, and it's, it's a stretch, and, and then they just have to, you know, take a stand because they're defending, you know, it's just the freedom. It's, 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 well, it's, 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 it's a freedom of speech. I'm here to collect the stamp tax. What's the stamp tax? It's a tax to pay for the king's troops to be here in America. Well, silly John Paul, we don't want the king's troops here in America. Good, because you won't want the stamp tax either. Hey, it's Paul Revere. Here come the British. Here come the British. Here come the British. Here's the tax. Ah! And here's the stamp. Oh. The 20,000 American farmers who became militiamen in the Continental Army were paid almost nothing. Meanwhile, the British, rolling in dough, could afford to send 40,000 fully trained and equipped professionals. And King George had enough cash left over to hire 30,000 German mercenaries. Achtung, baby. The Prussians are coming, the Prussians are coming. <laughs> Do you know, at this very minute, there are over 30,000 German mercenaries fighting in this country? No, but if you hum a few, a few bars, bars yeah. that might be <laughs> <laughs> My point is, yes. you need to get some musket practice. Oh, that'd be good, but I can't be there. No, I have a no. date with Sheila. You know, yeah. Dick, I'm, hmm. I'm sure she's a wonderful girl, but oh, I don't think is. that Sheila's wonderful. any match for 30,000 German Super soldiers. Girl. Oh, well, you don't know this girl. <laughs> oh, yeah? No, oh, no, I tell you, she's a I bet girl. bet she's something. She is something, okay, boy. Okay, but I'll how tell is she going to react girl. when she sees men falling in the field? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Usually she's right underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rushing to the Prussian. <laughs> Can you explain to me about this Minuteman signal? Well, sure, if the British are coming, it's one by land and two if by sea. Okay, see, that's not so bad. Sending one or two troops. No, no, Dick. Mm, no, 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 no. They're talking about candles. 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 Sending candles in the battle. Oh, the cowards, I will. I'll wax their no, wicks. Listen. That's what I'll be doing. You look for the me, I'm waxing the wicks. The candles? Um, yes. The signal in the window. Mm -hmm. Sure. Really? Yes. One candle if by land, two candles if by sea. <laughs> Ooh, Dan, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but England's way over there. They have to come, come by, by sea. sea sure. Hey. Very interesting. But the German Hessian mercenaries only take orders from the English. <laughs> Why can't they speak the king's German? <laughs> English, he doesn't speak mine. Now I understand you only fire your musket after you've had a bottle of muscatel. <laughs> yes, that's why I call it grape shot. <laughs> Very interesting. General Putnam said, don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Unfortunately, they've been drinking muscatel all night. <laughs> now I am bloodshot all over. <laughs> The term manifest destiny refers to the idea that God wants Americans to rule all of North America. In fact, the promise of limitless land there for the taking first drew colonists to the New World. But by the American Revolution, the westward expansion was encountering legal limits. You see, the British wanted to make sure the American colonies could be properly defended, which would be impossible if the colonists were too thinly spread. So, the British passed laws prohibiting the colonies from expanding beyond certain boundaries. And for the first time, Americans were feeling boxed in. <laughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> Just for real? No wonder you Yanks are revolting. Well, once again, folks, it's again. time for that moment when we find out who gets the Fickle Finger of Fate Award? And who's getting the finger this week, Dan? Well, this week award goes to the British government. Oh, them again, huh? That's right. Okay. And this time... Oh, let me guess. For their intolerance of the various religions here in the colonies? No. No? No, no, no my fine fickle friend. No, actually, the British have been 
more tolerant of different religions than almost anyone. I didn't know that. Yes. Well. In fact, they came over here to make peace when the Puritans went after the Anglicans and the Quakers. Well, and the Anglicans were quaking, I can tell you that much. <laughs> so I guess the Britons are getting it for playing the big colonies off against the small ones? Was my Rhode Island red? Put your red Rhode Island away, because actually the British protected the small colonies from the larger ones. Well, what the heck did they do? Britain, this is for informing your loyal subjects here in America that we are forbidden from settling the lands to the west and then telling us we're responsible for patrolling the huge undefended border. So, King George and British imperialists everywhere, the finger has come flying at you. If King George III and his wife, Queen George III, <laughs> had an heir, he'd be your first third to produce a fourth. <laughs> Oh, I would kill for a queen right now. <laughs> or at least a good yank. <laughs> what is the standard medical treatment for a hernia? Uh, why are you asking me? <laughs> oh, cool. uh, actually, doctors say we're very loose pants. Yeah. I'll disagree. Good for you, yes. No, the treatment for a hernia is castration. That's right, cut off the problem at the root. We hold these tooths to be... I did it again. <laughs> With brains like that, I don't understand how we're winning this war. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of wackiness. I, did it. I heard that in France, they're planning on splitting heirs with a guillotine. Well, let's just hope it doesn't come to that here. Absolutely. I don't want to learn French. I don't want to learn French now. How, how could you learn French with your head cut off? Well, I would send my head to school. And the headmaster would put it at the head of the class. Huh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you wait till you hear what my body's going to be doing. <laughs> the American Revolution produced democracy, freedom, a groundbreaking constitution, and the beautiful Declaration of Independence. But it's worth remembering that it started out as a tax protest. Few of the protesters imagined they were embarking on a path that would lead to war with Mother Britain, let alone produce the home of the brave and the land of the free. Well, not totally free, but darn cheap. Because even today, Americans pay far less tax than citizens of any other industrial nation. Of course, when you remember the citizen soldiers who died to create that new nation, you realize that freedom costs. And for the British, who lost their American colonies and eventually their entire empire, History bites. Say good night, Dick. Uh, uh, good night, Dick. Did you know that Ben Franklin invented the Franklin stove? I mean, really now, what a coincidence. Do you realize one of the main reasons everyone hates those British is because King George won't let us appoint our own judges? I mean, this whole country was started because we weren't allowed to say, here, here comes the judge, judge. here comes the judge. <laughs> If everyone is so keen on independence, how come it took seven months to convince everyone to sign the Declaration of Independence? It took us that long to learn to write. Oh, I put my John Hancock on that! Ha! Give me liberty, or give me... Oh, I was going to say, Wilma Schnitzel. <laughs>